Technologies webinar series. My name is Marcelo, and I will be your moderator for this session. Today's webinar is Human Interface via Epidermal Electronics. As a reminder, if you have any questions, please type them into our question box on the screen, and we will have uh, we will present those answer uh, questions to Dr. Yao. With no further ado, let me introduce Dr. Han Yao, Assistant Professor of Mechanical and Nuclear Engineering at Virginia Commonwealth University. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to talk about my research. Uh, today, um, I'm going to introduce some of my research, especially in materials and mechanics for human machine interfaces via epidermal electronics. Okay, let's get started. The outline is the following. Um, I'm going to introduce the research background and mechanics-based device design concept. And then I'm going to switch your gear uh, to talk about the application of epidermal electronics to record surface EMG and uh, for human machine interfaces. And as a last section, I'm going to uh, talk about the most recent data that I have, which is for uh, electroencephalogram EEG recording using epidermal electronics and its application for brain computer interfaces. So in terms of research background, uh, I want to focus on electronics. In the past, uh, as we all observed, the computers were mostly used at industrial level. So people have developed a uh, powerful computer, but the size is big, like the workstation shown over here. Even the personal size the workstation has great power, uh, but the size is big. And due to uh, the rapid development of silicon material based semiconductor technology, currently we are in the world where uh, those devices are on personal use. So pretty much everybody uses a personal laptop iPod and um, smaller size of laptop like iPad and where no smartphone like I iPhone. This is possible uh, due to the smaller but powerful um, silicon chips to uh, control those electronics. Then we can ask ourselves what's going to be the future? future of electronics. Of course, you can uh, imagine uh, smaller size of smartphone or computer, but even more powerful. But at the same time, um, I think you have uh, heard about wearable electronics uh, that's drawing attention these days. So in terms of that point of view, um, I'm imagining of those uh, advancement of wearable electronics uh, for bio-integrated, bio-inspired electronics. So you can simply imagine that on um, electronics, which is really small and made of micro and nano material that can be implanted inside a body, uh, like a blood vessel, um, to monitor blood pressure and flow, uh, which is going to brain, to monitor the human health. Or something like a uh, hand stimulator, so wearable type of electronics that can be uh, laminated on the skin of hands, can stimulate uh, and control some sort of machines based on the feedback. What an example of memory and eye. With that, uh, uh, we may ask that how can we integrate 
such silicon material based electronics with biology and medicine. So biointegration of electronics. It seems impossible by just looking at the conventional silicon material, which is uh, thin, about a micro, five, five mic, uh, 500 micron uh, in thickness, but it's hard and brittle. But due to the uh, beauty of this material of silicon, uh, we can make chips to control um, the smartphone or even camera and anything like that. But again, this material uh, is hard to imagine for direct integration with biology because of the mechanical properties. Uh, biological tissues, like a brain, as shown over here, has uh, ultra soft uh, material and curvy linear features and the characteristics of flexibility and stretchability. Uh, that's why this um, planar um, flat silicon material cannot have direct integration with such biological tissues. Then what's going to be next? Uh, we need a new type of electronics that can accommodate the material's characteristics from biology. So you may need, uh, need to develop a new type of soft material based stretchable electronics. I'm going to uh, narrow down the scope a little bit more such that I can uh, talk about one example, which is a um, biomedical device. Uh, this device can be used to monitor human health non-invasively on, by mounting on the skin. Typical example is shown over here. There is a patient uh, on the bed and a doctor or a lab specialist uh, mount metal-based uh, electrode onto the skin. So he, here this guy is trying to get a monitor of heart rate by mounting this electronics onto the chest area. And as you can see that this material was uh, mounted on the skin by using this white adhesive and tape. And there's a, a couple wires wrapped with um, soft material somehow and then ended with powering and data equation uh, control box. If you look at um, this picture in terms of materials point of view, especially uh, materials interface between the electronics and the skin, um, you can see this, this type of feature where uh, there's a curvy linear skin and then flat electrode uh, having normally one centimeter in diameter and it's going to be mounted on skin with tape. But as you can imagine, if you just directly mount this electrode onto the skin, there's a gap which will uh, generate electrical noise and impedance. So to avoid those issues, people have used conductive gels. Um, from this picture, we can get uh, some issues. Firstly, this hard material metal-based electrode has mechanical mismatch with uh, soft material's skin. So, Skin is soft, curvilinear, but the electrode is flat and hard. Also, the conductive gel that they used to increase the signal quality uh, can cause skin irritation and allergic reactions uh, once they wear it a long time. And it's not 
idea to use these gels for long-term recording on the skin, like uh, more than a day or all for a week, due to the degradation of the gel. And more importantly, this metal-based electronics is uncomfortable because it's stiff and heavy. So the bottom line is nobody wants to wear such electronics in real life. To avoid the aforementioned issues, uh, we came up with new idea to uh, make electronics like a skin epidermis. So here we call this epidermal electronics system, EES. Uh, this electronics uh, will be configured in a ultra thin, lightweight, stretchable materials. So with this electronics, we can observe two different uh, photo. So here's the electronics laminated on uh, skin, forehead in this case. And as you can imagine, um, this electronic was stay on the skin without any adhesive or tape, instead purely based on band walls interactions due to the light weight of the material. If you uh, zoom in the structure, then you can you know, observe that uh, this electronics was designed by this meandering structure. The main reason is that um, this type of structure can uh, accommodate the applied stress and strain on the skin deformation. So skin is continuously moving and deforming, not stay on. So we need to design this electronics in this type of way to avoid uh, fractures of the material, especially the hard material like gold and uh, other semiconductor materials. So. The important thing is uh, to look at materials and mechanics uh, to design such electronics. So as I said, uh, instead of a straight line based electronics, because it can be fractured by pulling in uh, longitudinal or lateral directions, uh, we need to come up with an idea to use a meandering feature like here. To do uh, quantitatively, uh, we use this computational software tool called finite element method to look at uh, parameters involved in uh, systematic design of uh, mesh structures, meandering structures, and here we call this as filamentary serpentine. I'm going to show you one example of the FEM study. To design uh, electronics based on meandering structures, so here I have one uh, single unit based array mesh of um, serpentines. And what it did was uh, by using FEM, we can apply uh, strains onto any directions. So here I apply 30% strain in uh, longitudinal direction. And as you can see that this feature will deform based on the um, strains. And there's a scale bar with the number at the top that shows uh, a value of maximum principal strain. So uh, considering the materials here I use the gold, gold membrane. The fracture strain of metal, including gold, is usually 1%. So here I'm trying to design this electronics having the value of maximum principal strain smaller than 1%. At the same time, uh, here I increase the width of serpentine from 10 micron to 200 micron. As you can see that, uh, the values are increasing. But with 20 micron width, it's still within the 1% range 
of the strain, so it's safe in mechanical st stability. And the 20% here I chose because it will give uh, higher surface contact to the skin, so we can get better uh, signals compared to 10 micron uh, wide fissures. This is one example, and here's the uh, um, the real sample that I made it based on the FEM study. So width is 20 micron, and based on same FEM study, I chose radius curvature of 45 micron and 200 nanometer in thickness. And again, I used a gold membrane. And importantly here, I placed that membrane into a neutral mechanical plane, NMP, by sandwiching um, the electronic grade polymer material called polyimid top and bottom. By doing so, this core gold membrane will avoid the direct observation of bending strains top and bottom. And um, here's the uh, gold membrane based filamentary serpentine with a strain. And if I apply 30% longitudinal strain, um, it will deform in like that without fracture. Of course, here I uh, conducted another FEM study to make sure that these features, uh, these features are safe in uh, mechanical strain. <laughs> Here the reason I used 30% criterion was based on uh, skin elastic limit, which is normally 10 to 20%. If you stretch your skin more than 20%, uh, it can be damaged. So we set this value as 30% to ensure the mechanical stability of such structures in periodic um, stress strain on skin mounting situation. Then how can you fabricate uh, such devices? Here um, the right hand side shows side view of fabrication process and right hand side shows the schematic illustration. So this fabrication process is following the conventional microfabrication steps. So firstly, we used a silicon wafer, but here we tweak a little bit by uh, coating a 5 micron thick PDMS uh, membrane. So PDMS is polydimethylcellulosane. This is for um, retrieve this structure uh, after fabrication. I'm going to get there later. Okay, so PDMS, and then I deposit the polyimid, and then gold membrane, 200 nanometer in thickness, by electron beam evaporation, and then sandwich this membrane by adding another polyimid at the top. And then based on the conventional photolithography, uh, uh, I can make the patterns of structures, which is shown over here. So any type of patterns can be uh, made by the resolvable step. Here this picture shows a uh, surface EMG sensor that I'm going to show you later. Then after that, once you finish your, your structure, then you can retrieve um, this structure from PDMS by using this uh, water soluble tape or elastomeric uh, rubber stamp. Once you do that, then it's going to be transferred onto the targeted substrate like silicon, membrane, or um, skin. So you can have direct lamination as well. So to help you understand better about this process, here I prepare iMovie 
as an example. This shows uh, the steps of printing uh, water, uh, not, I'm sorry, not water, rubber stamp mounted electronics onto the skin. So this is the electronics on rubber stamp. And then to transfer, here I add uh, one micron thick polymer membrane, uh, FDA approved. And then by using it as adhesive layer, I pressing um, the stamp with electronics onto the skin. Then it can be transferable onto the skin. And for further use, I uh, added the polymer membrane again on the top of the skin and device to completely encapsulate it. And then here I am applying compressive and um, tension strain to show the features of um, serpentine electronics following uh, the stress. This picture shows a better view of the printed electronics onto the skin forearm. As you can see that uh, the skin has curvy linear features with um, various sizes of amplitude and wavelengths, mostly in the range of uh, tens of micron up to hundreds of micron. And this deprinted electronics made of filamentary serpentine. And, and as you see that uh, this thin membrane will follow the morphology pretty nicely. <coughs> so once is electronics, you will follow the morphology of the skin. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it can uh, avoid the gap between electronics and the skin, such that without the gel application, we can have high quality uh, electrophysiological sensing from the skin. The next thing that um, I was focusing on was the device thickness of EES. It's pretty important to study because of the conformal contact that I just mentioned to follow the skin morphology. Once you design your electronics uh, to have conformal lamination onto the skin, and um, without the gel, you can get high fidelity signal. So here I prepare a uh, analytical model for calculation of um, the uh, device thickness. So I model the skin as a sinusoidal foam that has uh, this meandering surface, surface, and then on the top there's a uh, EES uh, membrane-based electronics. Once they are bond, bonding each other, um, you see the electronics will follow the skin. Uh, I call this as conformal contact. At this materials interface, uh, we can look on um, energy in, energy relationship. So the interface energy of electronics and skin is related to the bending energy and elastic energy and adhesion energy. So the conformal contact is determined. Uh, when the adhesion energy between two material is bigger than the sum of the elast uh, electronic bending energy and skin elastic energy. 
I serve in some vacations, you can get this final relationship that describes that um, this bending stiffness of epidermal electronics, which has direct uh, relationship with the device thickness, is related to uh, skin modulus, amplitude, wavelengths, and surface tension. By solving this equation analytically, you can get the relationship between uh, interface energy and the membrane thickness. And as you can see that this graph has a crossing point at uh, 25 micron. Uh, once the total thickness is smaller than that, it will have conformal contact. On the other hand, the thickness is bigger than 25 micron, then it will have non-conformal contact because of uh, the smaller adhesion energy compared to bending and elastic. So to, to prove um, this analytical calculation, we conducted an experiment by using um, scanning electron microscopy, we could investigate a materials interface between the electronics embedded membrane and the skin. So, since I cannot use my real tissue for this study, what I did was I made a skin replica shown as black background over here by using a polydimethyl silicone material. It's from my forearm as you know, periodic uh, features uh, having different amplitude and wavelengths. So I was uh, starting to mount 100 micron thick membrane and observe the interface from tilted and cross-sectional view. And as you can easily see that there is a gap between these two materials. Then I reduced it further. So about 36 micron membrane. If you see that uh, some parts were having conformal contact, but obviously um, uh, some parts still have gaps showing non-conformality. So by reducing the thickness further into the critical thickness regime, here I have five micron thick membrane that shows excellent conformality from this tilted and cross-sectional view. Once you zoom in further, then you can actually see the interface of electronics onto the skin. So here, the meandering serpentine based structures can follow the skin morphology pretty nicely. What that means is that you can acquire electrophysiological signal through the skin without gel and or adhesive. Okay, so far I have talked about the research background uh, and how to uh, develop a thermal electronic system based on mechanics and material. I'm going to switch over here and to uh, to show you some of my previous data that utilized uh, epidermal electronics to record surface EMG and its application for human machine interfaces. So first of all, uh, I was starting from materials again. So to get uh, optimal design of 
sorry, PCMG uh, on forum. I have two different types of electrode. One is from the conventional geometry that people use, the circular shape, one centimeter in diameter. And then I also had a bar type from the previous research survey. And then here I uh, varied the height and width and the interface, uh, interspacing between these two electrodes. Here actually this single device uh, has three electrodes, recording, reference, and ground. So by using this single um, device, uh, you can measure surface CMG directly. And everything was made of uh, meandering structure to follow skin morphology and apply stress and strain. For quantitative comparison uh, on forearm by muscle fraction, here we used the force gauge to monitor how much force uh, was applied on this muscle. And the targeting muscle on forearm uh, by squeezing was flexor carpi radialis at the same time. We want to look at the crosstalk contamination by squeezing outside. Uh, the targeted muscle was extensor. Okay. To uh, record the surface DMG, here we use uh, biocapture software from Great Lakes Neurotechnologies. Uh, this picture shows one example of system construction. There is a subject who is wearing FDM electronics on skill for uh, Actually, this is the printed electronics on the skin. And to acquire data and then power the electronics, here we use a connector. This is going to be interfacing this electrode with the wireless transmitter. It's good because you don't need to wear the wires all the time, and it's stretchable configuration, and it can be simply mounted onto the electrode by band wars interaction. And the data will be transmitted to the computer. Uh, using this uh, USB receiver. And this is the typical uh, surface EMG data uh, by uh, muscle fraction on forearm. Uh, for better understanding, here I prepared a movie that shows the surface EMG recording on forearm. So here is a subject who is wearing electronics there and by fraction uh, this computer software from biocapture will record the service CMG. So he's gonna uh, bend his wrist to generate muscle fraction. So you can clearly see the EMG peak uh, with an amplitude of, of 100 microvolts and high frequency signal. Okay. And next thing uh, was to optimize uh, the design for human machine interfaces. So we first really looked at the inter-electrode spacing. As I mentioned, there is recording a reference. So we wanted to look at this idea space S and the uh, muscle amplitude, uh, signal amplitude from fractal muscle when we vary it uh, into distance, and it's from extensor for cross top. And by summing these two data, 
you can get this cost contamination uh, based on the inter aerosol spacing. And as you can see that at 20 millimeter, you got the lowest cost of contamination. So it's either for for the use. And also you look at membrane thickness and device type. So membrane thickness is uh, directly related to the con uh, contact area of the electrons, which is from this equation. Uh, contact impedance is in inversely proportional to the contact area. But at the same time, it has a relationship with uh, skin hydration, as shown over here. <coughs> so we wanted to keep that value similar, right, the hydration, by purely looking at the relationship between impedance and the contact area. So as you can see that once the membrane thickness decreased from 500 micron down to 5 micron, uh, you see the uh, lowered uh, impedance values, which makes sense because the inner membrane, as we observed before, gives conformal contact compared to thicker membrane. Uh, that's why we are getting higher contact area with the same device. So we chose 5 micron in device thickness. At the same time, the thin membrane also gives a uh, lowest background noise compared to the thicker membranes. And also we look at uh, signal to noise ratio based on the device type from bar and disk. Uh, so width and height difference. And as you can see that bar 1 shows the highest value. So we chose bar 1 as um, ideal surface EMG device. The, the final thing that we looked at in terms of uh, characterization was the comparison between this uh, selected ES uh, and conventional gel-based electrode. What we did was we printed the electronics onto the forearm and monitor the background noise and motion artifacts. Here, in terms of amplitude, those have pretty similar values, but this gel has a little bit of fluctuation uh, based on the baseline movement of, of a subject. More importantly, if you add uh, additional motion artifacts onto the device, you can see that uh, the peak values of conventional gel electrode uh, which is a lot higher than epidermal. Uh, it's based on the, um, the geometry difference, as I mentioned, because the gel electrode uh, is on the floating uh, surface, but the ES has direct contact to the skin, so it's insensitive to the applied strain and motion artifacts. By using this device, uh, we want to have human machine interfaces for quad rotor control. The so same idea by printing this onto forearm uh, for mass fraction. Uh, here we used two electronics printing both forearms and generated four different gestures by manually. And uh, here's the subject, uh, actually it's me who's controlling um, this quad rotor by uh, making four different gestures, rotation, left, right, and squeeze. Then these different gestures uh, could uh, generate different types of signals and by using my lab software we can classify them into uh, commands like Cost, went, clockwise rotations, counterclockwise rotation, and fly forward for this quad rotor. Okay, so let's take a movie that shows uh, 
Control Control based on the surface energy. Please take a look at carefully about uh, my uh, motions of full arm and the following uh, motion of the core loader. So as you observe, uh, this quad order followed um, the gestures that I made. It. This is an example of um, human machine interfaces based on surface CMG recording. The last thing that I want to share uh, is about electrical encephalogram, EEG uh, based brain computer interface. Uh, instead of uh, using hair cap and uh, conductive gel that's normally used in neuroscience community. Here we design our um, external electronics. It's going to be mounted on non-hair bearing scales, like a mastoid shown over here, <coughs> or ear, or forehead. So to do that, we made an integrated electrode that actually involves three recording ground reference electrode each other interconnected using the stretchable wires. And it can be easily printed on the skin, so in this case mastoid and um, recording here, uh, I'm sorry, reference here and ground on the ear loop. And based on FEM study, uh, we can ensure the mechanical stability of this structure. Uh, actually, it was uh, stretchable up to 50%. So very good stretchability based on this uh, bio-inspired fractal structures. At the same time, we only to look at the skin-friendly uh, and biocompatible uh, characteristics of EES. What it did was we designed electronics that's completely encapsulated by silicone material, which is hydrophobic metal group based material such that uh, upon lamination and removal from skin, it doesn't take any of uh, epidermis uh, skin cells. Um, so uh, with multiple use, it, it doesn't cause any skin irritation or allergication compared to uh, acrylic tape-based medical uh, tapes that can normally exfoliate the skin cells, so it's not going to be usable. At the same time, we look at the biocompatibility by using uh, skin cell culturing onto the structure and use BioDead staining kit for us microscopy to look at compatibility. So basically, if you look at the red cells, uh, compared to green, uh, which shows by better uh, biocompatibility. And then this from control, uh, from biocompatible material, uh, and this from yes, has pre same um, number of cells, and in terms of counting, it's about 70%. As an example of brain computer interfaces, we used uh, ES to record the state state evil potential. So basically we mounted uh, electrode on the forehead, uh, side of the neck, next to it, back of the neck. We used them as a reference from 
I'm recording you actually. And um, uh, this subject, who's wearing electronics, uh, we'll look at the monitor that has uh, stimulation. So here we use two classifications with flickering uh, boxes. So what it does is it includes single box includes a different uh, number of smiling characters and the subject will look at the targeted uh, flickering window that includes the spelling character that he wants. So I'm going to show you a movie that uh, includes a text spelling computer uh, based on the subject's world, spec, world, uh, world prediction. So here, this subject is looking at a window that includes the character that he wants to spell it. So starting from C, he's looking at C. And then next thing is O, so he's looking at here. So based on uh, the algorithm development, we can increase the speed of this spelling by uh, predicting the next character based on the first character that he uh, spelled. And then after <laughs> spelling C-O-M-P-U, uh, word prediction, uh, can uh, easily imagine computer. Uh, so lastly, I want to discuss about uh, some data for long-term recording. As I mentioned by uh, the biocompatibility characteristic of ES, it can be uh, mounted on the scan for a long time. So here we used um, the spray bandage coverage onto the material such that this electronics can stay on skin for about two weeks. And then we used the releasable connector to get the data. Here we was recording alpha rhythm. So when a subject opened the eyes and closed the eyes, we look at the uh, 10 hertz frequency which is observed as an alpha rhythm, and then that's the day one. And a week later, this guy still shows a pretty good uh, signal to noise ratio of alpha rhythm, and even two weeks, you can easily uh, look at the alpha rhythm. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the epidemic electronics was completely encapsulated by the silicon membrane and onto the skin. So by uh, capacitive coupling of measurement and reference electrode, we can get the uh, EEG data here on alpha rhythm. The nice thing was once you completely encapsulate your electronics, then uh, you don't, you don't need to worry about waterproof. So you can be washable and um, by using like alcohol and disinfectant you can uh, clear any other uh, bacteria or anything like that on the surface of the electronics. And by doing so, you can get alpha rhythm clearly uh, by washing multiple times. It's after 20 times of washing. Okay, to uh, summarize my talk, today uh, I uh, talked about materials and mechanics for epidermal electronics and so PCMG EEG electrode and application for human machine interfaces. The ultimate goal of my research uh, is to develop a smart healthcare system. So thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Dr. Yao. Uh, I want to uh, have uh, some specific questions here for you. Uh, one is, how long has EES uh, uh, lasted for? Has it lasted longer than those two weeks? Yeah, yeah um, the one that I showed you was spray on bandage, uh, material based uh, wearing, which lasted two weeks. But once you use uh, medical grade, uh, taped called Tegadon, it can be wearable more than two weeks. Uh, I was wearing like more than three weeks before. So it depends on the purpose. In your research and using the bio radio, uh, how did you interface with the EES and the bio radio? So uh, here I, in this study, I used the releasable connector that I show you that actually has uh, connecting lines to the uh, wireless transmitter and then uh, for the electrode size um, there is a pad on it so by designing that connector uh, on a stretchable membrane I can use bandwidth force to mount the connector onto the electrode pad uh, to get the data and power. Uh, it looks like those are all the questions that we have time for. If we haven't gotten to your questions, please feel free to email us and we will have either Dr. Yao or one of our representatives contact you. Thank you for joining us today.